This is a piece of rock, sand, and other material that was fused into a kind of glass on July 16, 1945. The tremendous source of heat that created this glass? The Trinity Test, the world's first nuclear explosion. This radioactive piece of trinitite, therefore, is a tangible timestamp of the millisecond that we entered the nuclear age. Or is it? Last time I talked about nuclear weapons, I was met with a flurry of comments from a brand new conspiracy theory I had never heard of. Do nuclear weapons actually exist? Or is it just one big government fool em up? Now entering the facility. Now, I consider myself pretty up to date on all the nuclear stuff, but when I traveled all the way to Japan to show all of you the ultimate fate of Hiroshima, the video was met with dozens and dozens of comments, the likes of which I had never seen before. They were all claiming the same thing, that nuclear weapons don't exist, that it's all a government psyop, dude, that conventional bombs were dropped on Japan, that nuclear power is a myth, that all those test videos you've seen are edited bullcrap. The resurgence in this weird conspiracy theory seems to stem from this single tweet from Owen Benjamin. It has almost 30 million views. He's looking at old test footage and saying, well, where is the radiation? Why weren't the cameras vaporized? Aren't they called X's, not tweets now? No, Arya, they're not called X's. No one's ever gonna call them X's. Only people who tank companies call things, oh. I'm fine, I'm fine. We will get to Owen's specific claims in just a moment, but in regards to nuclear power, obviously nuclear power is a thing. It powers a lot of the planet percentage-wise, and I have seen the Cherenkov radiation in spent fuel pools with my own eyes. But to be fair to Mr. Whatever their name is, I already forgot, I have not, no, seen a nuclear weapon myself. So, although I know some of you are already screaming at your depression generators with some answers, let's take the conspiracy theory claims at face value and ask, okay, where is the evidence that nuclear weapons exist? Isn't it literally everywhere? Arya, shh. You're gonna scare the conspiracy theories' views away. They're skittish. They don't like the light. The science light. To be clear, I don't want nuclear weapons to exist. I wish that they didn't. I think nuclear annihilation is still one of the biggest existential threats to humanity. And I think that because nuclear weapons have so clearly made their mark. The evidence begins with Trinity. Not only do we have radioactive glass with the appropriate spectrum of emission that we expect from fission products, we have the eyewitness testimony of some of the smartest men to ever live. Men who, it should be said, didn't want nukes to exist either, and were haunted for the rest of their lives by the fact that they had something to do with them. And this test testimony isn't limited to Nobel Prize winners. Nuclear tests used to be Vegas attractions. Thousands of people have seen real mushroom clouds with their very own protected peepers. But isn't eyewitness testimony the lowest form of scientific evidence? It is, Arya, but we're starting only with the most obvious evidence. Next is the most unfortunate. The conspiracy theory that nuclear weapons don't exist claims that massive conventional bombs were detonated at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, not nuclear ones. To me, the dismissal of the only offensive use of nuclear weapons is itself offensive. It takes just a few seconds of walking through the Peace Park Museum in Hiroshima, like I did, to see the horrors that only a fission-powered weapon can produce. Photos of Japanese doctors encountering acute radiation syndrome for the first time and being unable to treat it. Recollections and paintings of people without skin shambling among the ruins like zombies. An actual step where a man's shadow was etched into concrete by unholy heat. To claim that all of this was covered up or faked is to both deny the suffering of so many Japanese and to ignore the stated goal of the bombings in the first place, a shock to leadership with a single weapon. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. To me, it seems like all the evidence you would ever need to disconfirm this conspiracy theory was produced 
1945. But this is just the beginning of a mountain of evidence. As Arya said, all of this evidence is not in some American desert or Japanese museum. It's literally everywhere. The conspiracists are attacking the comment section. Dang it! Deploy defense measures! When will they learn? <laughs> Speaking of learning, Today's episode is sponsored by SoFi. Gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and Xerox Samson, Kyle Hill. You know, no matter what, I will always support you if you want to further your education, especially if you believe in weird conspiracy theories. You probably shouldn't do too much of that. Unfortunately, today, education can be extremely expensive. That's why I wanted to introduce all of you lifelong learners to today's sponsor, SoFi. SoFi is a mobile-first personal finance company that helps members bank, borrow, and invest, known for its excellent rating when it comes to refinancing student loans. Want to learn engineering and math and how to take over the what I mean computer science? Don't let the burden of big, complicated loans prevent you from becoming your smartest self. Refinance with SoFi at competitive rates to put thousands of dollars back in your pocket. There are no application fees or prepayment penalties. There are loans with unemployment protection built in, and it's all online with 24-7 customer support with real humans. There is life after debt. See what I did there? If you want to join the half a million people who have already gotten smart in a financially smart way and have already refinanced over $40 billion doing so, go to the URL right here or click the link down in the description. Look, education shouldn't be a SoFi's choice between money and study. See what I did there again? Ah, SoFi. If you take the conspiracy theory that nuclear weapons don't actually exist seriously, it might be easy enough for you to ignore or dismiss one or two or even three nuclear explosions and their test footage, but there haven't been one or two or three nuclear tests after Trinity. There have been over 2,000 and all over the world by many different governments that would all have to be conspiring over many decades. There have been so many nuclear tests, in fact, that the evidence for them today is still all around us. In the aftermath of a nuclear explosion, vaporized material and fission products with varying half-lives condense and reform. The larger particles quickly fall out, close to the blast, but the microscopic particles can be held aloft in the atmosphere for weeks, traveling hundreds of kilometers or more before they land somewhere. Because of the thousands of nuclear tests over the years, we can still detect these radioactive signatures that have no better explanation today. It's the cesium on the ground. It's the tritium in the water. It's the activity in the paint that's been used to detect forgeries, as paint from a time before nuclear testing wouldn't have the same signature. It's the activity in the wine that has also been used to detect fakes. It's the activity in old film. Kodak actually knew about secret weapons testing before anyone else did because of it. It's in the Earth. Astronauts have trained in nuclear test craters to simulate the moon. Are all astronauts lying about this? Try telling that to Buzz Aldrin. He'll sit you down. And if you don't have fancy radioactive wine, just travel to Japan. The ship involved in the disastrous Castle Bravo nuclear test, the Lucky Dragon No. 5, is still on display. You can see the ashes of death that rained down on unlucky fishermen that day yourself. Or go see one of the, I don't know, 3,000 Godzilla movies that were based on the aftermath of Castle Bravo. Turn on the TV and check out the pineapple under the sea. It's under Bikini Atoll, where the Castle Bravo test took place. This is first grade, SpongeBob. The evidence for nuclear tests and their byproducts is so widespread, in fact, that nuclear material in the geologic record is one of the proposed starting points of the Anthropocene, a geologic epoch where human activity becomes distinguishable and dominating. So, in denying that nuclear weapons exist, conspiracy theorists are actually denying one of the very hallmarks of the human age. You should send an X about it. I'm never gonna send an X about anything. Why would I? Don't get me wrong. I do have some amount of sympathy for people who believe this kind of thing. Invisible stuff is hard. But this is also the kind of topic that you can verify for yourself. You can go out and buy an actual sample of Trinitite from the Trinity test and using simple at-home equipment, 
survey it for the emission spectra that you only get after nuclear fission has occurred. And better yet, you can do it from your armchair, where conspiracists spend most of their time. LOL, get right. But really, this is all not that much better than something like flat earth theory, which is readily disprovable. And it's saddening that it all gets amplified, enforced, maintained by social media echo chambers. It's gotta be one of the weirdest theories I've ever come across. Until next time. You know some people think Finland doesn't exist? What? But y'all need to go outside. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want videos early, private live streams, and access to our private Discord where I'm at 24-7, go to patreon.com slash kylehill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here in every single video. And as I see, there's so many. How am I going to pass the time as all of this? Now, I realize I didn't actually get to Owen What's-His-Name's claim in that viral tweet. He was saying, where is the radiation in Hiroshima and why weren't the cameras during those tests vaporized? Part one, we have an entire episode on this. Hiroshima wasn't left a nuclear wasteland because it was an air burst that didn't suck up a lot of ground material. And actually, when you have a uh, an air burst like that, the majority of radiation from the fission products that are produced is released in the first 24 to 48 hours, and then it decays and disperses to harmless. In the second case, why weren't the cameras vaporized in all those tests? Well, first, some were that were very close in some of those nuclear tests, but also when you see the blast wave go by, um, that's not the fireball. Oh, and the fireball is the hot part. Remember that. Thank you for watching the show.